Welcome back, everybody. I'm Corey. She's Laura. And as a group, we are Embracing Wander. So thanks for watching the channel. Um, today, we're going to do a video that we have been putting off for quite some time. You mean I keep playing in the ring for no reason? Well, I don't know about for no reason. But... <laughs> so we're going to give a tour of the little place we've called home for the last six months. We live in a Grand Design Solitude 3740BH. And so when we were looking up at this rig, like we found a lot of value out of watching other RV tours. So we thought it's time to pay it forward and show you guys a little bit uh, of, of our life. <laughs> are, you, are you ashamed? I cleaned it, I promise. <laughs> it's very clean. She cleaned it very well. Mm -hmm. um, so as you guys are watching this, like if you find any value in this, if you like it at all, Please hit that like button. The subscribe helps us out a lot. We are a very small channel and trying to grow it. So any any uh, feedback you guys could give us it would be greatly appreciated. That being said, like what were the requirements that we had when we were looking at which rig to get? Like, Because I know there's a lot of... Everyone has their different um, needs. So what, what were we looking for? Okay, so we had about seven. We wanted separation. We wanted the kids to have a room and us to have a room. So we knew we wanted a rear bunkhouse. We wanted washer dryer hookups. We wanted space in the master bedroom for you to have an office. Right. We wanted space in either the living area or the kids' bunkhouse to for to store their homeschooling stuff or to, and to do their homeschooling stuff. We wanted vents that were not in the floor, the heater vents. We wanted them to be lifted up. We wanted um, an outdoor kitchen. We wanted a dinette. Um, how many was that? I think that was a, oh, when we figured out that we weren't going to be able to find what we needed in a used rig, we wanted a rig that was going to be a four seasons rig. And mm -hmm. we wanted a rig that was going to be warranted for full time, full -time living, living, which is hard to find because not all companies warranty for full time living. Right. So those are our requirements. What specifically, give me kind of the overall specs. Of okay. Our so rig. I'm going to, I'm going to read these off because I can't remember them mm -hmm. verbatim, but the, we landed on the 3740BH from Grand Design as being, okay, this met all of our requirements. So real quick, before we get in the tour, I just want to list and, and I'll put these on the screen, list the exact specs for this one, for this model in case anyone's interested. So um, the, the big one that, that we had going in was the cargo carrying capacity. So this one has a GVWR of 16,800 pounds. So that is the most weight that you can put in this rig recommended from the manufacturer. The unloaded vehicle weight or the UVW from the factory is 13,884 pounds. So if you do the math on that, we can put up to 2,916 pounds worth of cargo in this rig. So that includes all of our water that we carry, all of our clothes, all of our, everything that we put in, 2,916 pounds. Um, the total length is 40 feet, four inches. The height, 13 feet, five inches. We <laughs> tested that. We, we confirmed that that was pretty accurate the other day when we went through a very low overpass. Um, we do have two separate, uh, I, I guess there's two separate gray tanks and two separate black tanks, one in the back, one in the front. Um, they make a total of 106 gallons on the gray and 106 gallons on the back, combining those together. And then we have the capability of carrying up to 91 gallons of fresh water. So those are kind of the, the high level specs for this particular rig. Okay, and so with all that being said, I think you, you ready to get into the tour? Yeah, let's go. So here we are, living room, dining room, kitchen, Baxter's bedroom. <laughs> so many things in such a little space. So the Grand Design 3740BH comes with a super sofa that would have all this across here. However, we opted for a dining table and chairs. This works out perfect for our family because we have a homeschool area, dining area, and then chairs to lounge in. The kids can prop pillows up here and lounge and watch movies. Then we have Baxter's bedroom. So fancy. <laughs> we come over here, we have a fireplace. It is 
rather warm outside so this is just for looks right now but this does produce heat it's an electric fireplace so it pushes out heat we do use it pretty much every morning when it's cool it warms up rather well well or keeps the temperature when the heater warms up we have um tv tv and media area um one thing i did not mention was that we opted for along with the fireplace here and in addition to having gas heat, we also have electric heat. So we opted to add a heat pump. So in the morning we get up, we turn on the heater, the gas heat runs, the electric heat runs, and we turn the nice little heater on and it warms up pretty much within 10 to 15 minutes, like 15 degrees. So it's pretty nice. Baxter is in there chewing his bone. <laughs> we have um, the typical three eye gas stove. We have a gas, um, oven and then we have a convection microwave that I am starting to love now that I'm learning to use it and realizing which racks to use so I don't burn stuff. <laughs> then we have a nice little oven down here which is becoming more for storage because it does use the propane and I'm kind of trying to not use as much propane because it takes a while to heat up when we do have to run the heater and then we have some other storage. So in here there is plenty of storage for my pots and pans, my Ziploc bags, our dishes, coffee things, all the things that we need for a family of four um, with our kitchen area. It's all stored in here. It's not stored anywhere else. We also opted for an RV refrigerator. This is not necessarily the case and most of them that you will look at will be residential refrigerators, which will be much bigger, but they will not run on gas. It was important for us that we got a refrigerator that ran on gas so that if we opted to stay somewhere that we didn't have electric, electric hookups, that our refrigerator would still run. So it is smaller than a residential fridge, but for us, a family of four, we're able to fit one to two weeks worth of groceries in here as long as I don't go absurdly crazy on the produce that needs to be refrigerated. So you can take a look in here, but I mean, there's plenty of room in the fridge and freezer. I'm just starting to realize the freezer actually does keep stuff pretty solid. We have ice that we do in there and frozen vegetables and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's plenty big for, for us and Arnie. We also, which is very, very handy, all the cabinets in here that we have, I don't have to store food. We have a pantry, a squeaky pantry, but a pantry nonetheless. There are one, two, three, four shelves in here. This is plenty. Um, we have, I have space for all the extras that I might need. And then all of our food for, like I said, one to two weeks. It's pretty um, standard that we'll have enough space in there for that. And then I have like cutting boards and some, some bigger spices that we use um, in bulk. So over here i don't we only we only do have three drawers i use those for dish towels and random things and ziplocs and things so we keep our silverware on the counter but this is comes in very handy um these shelves actually over here are not with kitchen materials even though they're in the kitchen we have batteries um and random things so all of this over here is just kind of bonus space with the exception of the silverware so this video is not really about um, organization and things. We'll have another video to follow about that. But just know that we have plenty of space in our kitchen for a family of four. And if I got rid of the things that I wasn't using, I would actually have kind of some additional space. We've not had an issue with space in here. So that kind of wraps it up for this area. Let's move to the bunkhouse and check out the kids room. Okay, let's go check out the kids bunkhouse with this cool sliding farmhouse door. Come on in. Everybody is in here. Baxter's chilling, chewing his bone. So excuse the loud noise. Lan is up there chillaxing and Kate is in her little nook chillaxing. Okay, Grand Design bunkhouse was actually designed to sleep potentially one, two, three, four, five, six people. You ask, okay, why five, six people? I just counted two people here and there's nothing there. Well, when you purchase this, there's actually a couch that has a pullout um, full-size bed. We did not need that since we only have two kids. It was more important for us to have a homeschool slash play area for the kids. So this was converted. This is now a kind of play area. This bed was taken out and given to Kate. So she has a double stack mattress. This is all of their kind of toys and outdoor things which are by there. I put down some contact paper so they can kind of 
deal with that. So that's really cool. So, but potentially if you needed it, there could be three people sleeping here. Um, Kate has also converted. Let me move this so you can get a good idea, but she's in here. We put up a nice little um, hanger for her so she has some separation. She's in here. She's going to wave at us. But there is a... Hi, kid. There's a twin-size bed under here that she can sleep in. And up here on top, which is really awesome and you would never expect this in a bunkhouse, is a full-size bed that Land claims as his own. He has his own artwork, his hats, pictures he likes, and kind of hangs that out. And this is just a cool kind of reading nook that we have here. So this is a really big room that they have. All of their clothes are in the drawers. And these cabinets, these are not that deep because the outdoor kitchen is out there. But we, um, it is slam full. But if you saw the 30 day review, I broke some things in here. And so now I have to only store like jackets and things. Um, uh, the shoe issue is I purchased these hanging things. All their shoes are here. They have their hiking backpacks. However, there is more room up above that I could definitely hang more command hooks if needed. And that may come along. One thing that was not on the must have list that I listed was an extra bathroom. I thought, hey, we're downsizing. It'll be okay. Let's go from two and a half baths to one bath. Well, once I realized getting another bathroom was an option, I was pretty excited about that because now I don't have to share a bathroom with them and the seven-year-old boy who might like to tinkle on the potty. So they have their own half bath. They have a potty and a sink. They have a nice big cabinet in there that has like beach towels and regular towels. They often also have their huge hamper. I did miss my laundry room, but I was able to find some huge hampers to store their dirty clothes. So they're able to brush their teeth and get toothpaste all over their sink and TT on their body instead of mine. So this half bath is coming pretty handy. And then they have their own emergency exit out their door and also emergency exit out his window door. So that if that's a concern for you guys, which it was for me, there are multiple ways that they can get out. And we also have an alarm on their door so we know when it is opened. So with all that being said, Let's go check out the other end of the house that's so far away. <laughs> so I forgot to mention one of our favorite things about this rig when we were in here. These windows, they're huge. Some rigs come with storage up over a head and I can see where that would be handy, but I would take these windows over that any day. I'm able to see sunrises and sunsets and not feel claustrophobic and feel open like I'm in a real home. So Grand Design does a really awesome job in all of their rigs about getting really big windows and I love them and so does everybody else. Okay, so let's go on up and see the other end of the rig. Take a couple steps and we're into the big bathroom that we have here, it's huge, right? Don't be jealous. <laughs> we have our full-size shower, which is plenty big for all of us. There's also actually a little bit of room if you needed a little bit of tub. You There's not a plug, but you could get one of those things. So if you had little ones, you could actually bathe them in there. Um, and then we have the potty and a sink and a medicine cabinet. There are these pretty deep cabinets here, which Corey and I are not very tall, if you haven't noticed. Um, so you can store stuff way back there. I don't use, usually store most of the stuff that we get to a lot back there because they are very deep. But everything that we use on a daily basis is kept in our medicine cabinet and the cabinets down here. There is plenty of room for the things that we need. Okay, so let's move into where the money is made. No, not that kind of money. Over here <laughs> is Corey's office. Yes, the money I was referring to. So we did do some modification. This is the regular dresser that is stored here. We added this Ikea slab and then he mounted his monitor and stuff. So he sits here actually and works eight to five every day. Um, then our bedroom, our bed area is here. We did, um, our headboard broke early on. One of those things that broke early on when we were home for Christmas, we 
added this peel and stick wallpaper. I wasn't sure how well it was going to work, but we have been through humid, cold, wet, and it has stayed. So I'm pretty excited about that and I really like it. So this is our big bedroom. We did opt for a queen size bed just to give us a little bit more room. You can get a king size bed, but I don't think that would work for us because we needed the space for Corey. And it is a little bit of a struggle when he's in here working, I have to climb over the bed to get into the closet, which is where the washer dryer hookups and things are that we have. So we have, um, like I said, a queen size bed, Corey's office. We've redone the headboard and we have plenty of room in our closet. He keeps all his, a lot of his computer equipment. Um, our shoes. I actually have, when we went home and did a purge, we have lots of room in here. We have hanging room. We have room because it's the nose of the, the rig. We have room behind that. We have um, lots of shelves that we'll show you. It's full now and you can't get back there, but I'll show you a glimpse of what it looked like before we filled it up. Um, so we have plenty of room in here for us. There's also storage under the bed. If you lift the bed all under this queen size bed, we have suitcases and some winter things, just some random things because Corey does still sometimes have to travel. So we keep our suitcases with us, but there is storage under the bed as well. So we pretty much have everything that we need inside our rig to handle a family of four plus a dog. If I'm being honest, we have extra space. If we had extra family members, if we really came down to what we used and what we didn't, this is plenty big for us. So now that we've seen what's on the inside, I'm going to hand it over to Corey and let him show you what's on the outside. All right, so I figured we'd start at the front of the rig and then we'll kind of just work our way back. So at the front, we've got, I don't know what the official name for it is, but it's our front storage area slash where we would put a generator had we had it. So we did order the rig um, custom from the factory. So there were several things that we knew that we wanted. One of them was we wanted the generator prep put in just in case we ever did decide to go with a generator in the future. Um, if anybody's out there looking and you think it might be something you're interested in and you have time to wait for the, the custom order package, I highly recommend you go ahead and get the generator prep. It adds about $1,000 to the overall bill, but really you can't do that afterwards. It would cost a ridiculous amount of money to put all in the wiring and stuff to retrofit a rig. So we have it in here. It's all ready. We just don't have the generator at this point. Um, so we just use, we put the, the sewer hoses and things in here, and it's basically just a storage unit. I've got the, the Blackstone griddle, I've got the Vi-Air, some fishing stuff, and really it's just storage right here. So um, that is our front storage compartment. Now let's go around to the basement, as I'll call it. And it's normally not near this cleaned out. So I wanted to, I cleared out most of the stuff that we carry around on a day-to-day -day basis just to kind of, so you could get a look and see, um, you know, kind of some perspective about how much area was in there. It's definitely not as big as some of the units that I've seen. Um, the wall that goes across here definitely takes out a lot of space. Um, but we can fit everything that we need. We have a, a tote that we put in that carries most like chemicals and cleaners and things like that. We've got my tool bag. Um, there's a blower. So it carries everything that we need in here. But I just kind of wanted to, to give you a look and, and so you could get an idea of what it is. Um, go around here to the front. It does come with two. There's one on this side and one on the other side. Two 30 pound propane tanks. And they're on the system where they automatically switch over when one of them gets empty. We always keep one closed. That way when we run out of gas, that's our indicator that, hey, you need to go switch it around and fill up the tank. Um, so that being said, we'll swing around to the other side and I'll show you the wet bay. Okay, so on this side, you can see it's a pass through. So there's where we just were on the other side of the basement. Um, you do definitely have a more narrow section on this way, so it definitely narrows down on this side. Normally, I keep 
my hoses, my water hoses and things, just in milk crate store right there. This seems to work pretty good. They fit fit just right. Um, it does have the Nautilus um, Nautilus water system. It's worked out pretty well. There's, if you read on the forums, a lot of people will say good things and bad things about it. We haven't had any really problems on out of it. Um, there were some minor leaks on the backside, and I think we mentioned that in a previous video about um, replacing some of the tubing that they put in with PEX piping. But other than that, we haven't really had any problems with that. This unit does have two black tanks and two gray tanks. The front black tank and gray tank pull, handle pulls are right here in the wet bay. Um, you'll see it does, the 3740BH also comes with the electronic leveling system. So this is a Solitude S-Class. And the S-Class, there's probably more differences, but one of the primary differences between the Solitude S-Class and just the Solitude is the S-Class has electronic jacks where the regular Solitude will have hydraulic jacks. And I think also the windows um, on the regular Solitudes are, are frameless windows. There might be some other differences, but those are the two that I know of. I've not had any real problems out of the electronic leveling system. It's actually worked out pretty well. So one thing you'll notice, we did install this after we got the rig. We put in the steady fast stabilizers and they work really well. Um, basically, once you install them, you just loosen this, loosen this right here before you move the jack up and down and then when you get set up you just tighten that back up and it takes all the or it takes a lot of the wiggle out so the steady fast systems work really well i know there's a couple others the, the jt strong arms and um there's there's different leveling blocks you can get to kind of low reduce the amount of stroke that your jack legs have and that takes some sway out but we really like these they're super easy to take up and down um, as we're as we're setting up so now let's go around to the back i'll show you the back of the rig this this unit does have four slide outs so there's three on the driver hand side there's one for the master bedroom one for the kitchen and this is the bunkhouse slide out and you guys sorry it's it's it needs a, a complete wash it's super dirty right now so just overlook that so right underneath the bunkhouse slide are the black tank and gray tank pulls and it also has a totally separate drain point back here. So normally I use this Y adapter right here, and that's how we, we normally drain. So, and sorry, we're in tight quarters in, in quarantine mode right now, so we're kind of backed in here. All right, so the back of the rig, nothing super fancy back here, just a window to the bunkhouse, a ladder to go up the top. But one thing I did want to point out, because a lot of rigs don't have them, this one does have a dedicated two inch hitch mount back here. So you could put a tray or something to carry, maybe an extra generator, um, storage if you had it, something like that. We actually use it to carry our bikes. So I was able to actually find a hitch mount bike rack that was RV rated, to that would carry all four of our bikes so it, it took a little digging to to find this one but i'll put some details about this particular hitch in the comments below and i think i'm going to do a video about that in particular um coming up shortly so i think with that being said the only other thing to show is the outdoor kitchen so let's go around and check that out okay so now let's check out the outdoor kitchen I know that's at the top of a lot of people's priority list. They want that outdoor kitchen. And we did too, to be honest. And it is a very nice kitchen. So there's lots of room in here. You've got, you know, four cabinets. You've got another little storage cubby here. You've got a, lots of counter space that you could use to cook with. Um, there's a sink, though the sink is a little high. So if you've got, you know, shorter people or kids, like it's not easy to tell them just go wash their hands here because Depending on where you're parked, this could be, you know, way up here. We've parked at some uh, campsites where the sink was was up to eye level on me. So um, it's not always super useful, but it's nice to have. So the fridge is probably something that we use the most. We normally stay places at least a week at a time, and we don't like to go to the grocery store every day. So this just helps us move some drinks and things like that that normally we would have to keep in the refrigerator out here. The downside about this is it does not stay refrigerated when we're actually going down the road like our internal refrigerator would since it runs on propane. So this is not really a good thing to store if you're going to be driving for, you know, eight hours a day. 
It also does come with its own dedicated cooktop out here. We've never used it, primarily because we have the Blackstone griddle and it's just a bigger cooking surface. So if we're gonna grill or something like that, I'll just pull the Blackstone out and right underneath here, there's a gas quick connect that I can hook the Blackstone directly in. Um, so I, I really can't give a pro, yay or nay as to how good the, the internal grill works since we, we just haven't used it. Um, so overall, it is a very nice outdoor kitchen. Like there's, there's actually a spot to do a TV. Uh, you can mount a TV out here. So that would be good like on game days and things like that. But in six months, like this is an area that we have not utilized near as much as we thought we would have. I think if, if we had the option, if you know that was a checkbox on the order form, we would probably take this out and give, put more storage space on the inside. Um, just because it, we haven't found that we used it that much. So, but it's, it is nice to have it. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up the outside of the RV. Really quickly before I end though, I did want to mention that it does have two separate awnings, one over the living room area and one over the front of the coach. Um, and also when we ordered, we did go with the slide toppers on all four slides. I highly recommend that. I think that's been, that's been great savings on us having to like sweep the slides off um, in between when we're packing up and things like that. With the slide toppers, I can just get on there, blow them off really quick with a with the blower, and we're good to go. So I really like the slide toppers. If that's an option, you know, go for that as well. Um, but that being said, like I'll I'll go find Laura and we'll kind of wrap this up. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up the tour. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Okay. If you like the video, make sure and hit like. And if you want to see more from us, more RV related things and travel videos, make sure and hit subscribe. It really helps us out. So be sure thumbs up and subscribe. And I know we went really fast. This is actually one of our longer videos, but I, it feels like we went really fast through the tour. So I'm sure we missed some things. So if there's anything in particular that you were wondering about, um, about this particular rig, drop us a comment below and we will definitely get back to you. Yep. So we have lived in this rig for seven months. Like we've said many times, we are very happy with this rig. There's not a whole lot we would change. So overall, it has, we definitely give it a thumbs up. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So um, I know you guys have, if you've watched any of our videos, but we have Corey, myself, Kate, which is 11, and Lan, which is a seven year old, and a dog that Four all live here. Yeah. Four plus one. Four and a half. So we have plenty of room for all of us, and there is extra room so overall we really like this rig and we are not one of those that are ready to go shopping for another rig that's absolutely <laughs> not on our list so like we said we love our rig if you like this make sure to give us a thumbs up and we'll see you guys next time see ya bye, bye.